nostalgia is a heck of a drug. And every form of media loves to ride that self-indulgent bandwagon through your childhood in order to play into your love of days gone by. Video game developers are frequent culprits of this, and usually, it ends up paying off to appeal to the preferences of long-term gamers, who want to re-experience the sensation of their classic favorites. Yacht Club Games nailed this bullseye with their retro-action platformer, Shovel Knight. However, nostalgia can easily be misused as a sad attempt to polish an otherwise lackluster game. This goes far beyond the idea of, oh man, look at games these days, everything used to be simpler, look at all the nonsense on the screen, they just don't make them like they used to. This is, however, about playing into the lovable nature of a genre as a whole. Shovel Knight is constructed to be enjoyed as a strong action platformer game, no matter the way it looks. Replace every image on the screen with textureless hitboxes, and the game would still play exactly the same. This pixelated icing on top that everyone digs their teeth into was little more than an homage by fans of that generation in gaming. Yes, it was literally a simpler time for gaming for the most part, but in some aspects it was also a very complicated time, as video games figured out how to work properly and how to appeal to the home gamer. Nostalgia is powerful, but it can't fix a broken game. There are still do's and don'ts when developing any game, even if it's supposed to be familiar to what we've seen in the past. That just goes to show how much is going on correctly inside the workings of Shovel Knight. And we're going to have to do a little bit of digging to figure out what's so great about Shovel Knight. There are a lot of ways to hit all of those nostalgic checkboxes when aiming for a retro style game. And lots of options means plenty of ways to do it wrong. This doesn't even apply exclusively to platformers. When reaching out to the fondness of a classic fanbase, there's a fine line between reconstructing a game that has been played before and clicking into the foundations of a genre. Let's look at this difference between Shovel Knight, an obvious homage to the 80s and 90s action platformers, and Ukulele, a flashback to the late 90s collectathons. I'll say off the bat, Ukulele is great in all of its own ways. The soundtrack is chipper and fun, the entire world is colorful, and I'm sure we'll do a video for it eventually. But the difference between these two games is that with Ukulele, you immediately recognize what it is supposed to be. It's meant to be an affectionate continuation of the Banjo-Kazooie series. Now, this is by no means a mortal sin of game design. After all, the development team is mostly the same, but without being a fan of the Banjo games, there isn't as much about Ukulele that stands on its own in this day and age. On the other hand, Shovel Knight holds on to the sensibilities of nearly every entry of the action platformer library of the NES and Super Nintendo. Even back then, those games were not incredibly varied. There were good ones and bad ones, but the more memorable entries had specific features and compelling aspects to their styles that made them more unique and inviting to players. Boot up the title screen of Shovel Knight to clear up any confusion you may have had as to what you were about to experience. Right from the get-go, this game boasts an attractive retro feeling through chip tunes and some well-modeled 8-bit graphics. In fact, Yacht Club Games followed as many of the same limitations of the original NES and Famicom hardware as they could, and even utilized some well-known shortcuts to get the most out of said limits. They even nearly stuck to the original NES color palette, only adding four of their own colors for more detail. These colors were some deeper tones of purple and red for shading, as well as a beige and a light brown for more detailed character options. Shovel Knight also maintains the original tile dimensions of the NES, but adds some intricacies such as more layers for deeper parallax scrolling. The music and sound of Shovel Knight was composed by Jake Kaufman, composer of Shantae and DuckTales Remastered. Sticking to the historic truth of NES predecessors, the music is designed to be played on the VRC6 sound chip, the same used in Castlevania 3 on the Famicom. For context, that's only three extra audio channels than the majority of NES titles. One modern adaptation, however, was the fact that the music doesn't cut out to make way for sound effects, as older consoles were known to do. By adhering to many of these limitations, but knowing where to push the envelope, the Yacht Club Games team was able to create something that felt both classic and fresh. However, you can see all of this from the start, so let's take a look a little deeper at what's going on underneath the graphics. After all, a game doesn't just have to have the right look, but the right feel, too. The opening stage of Shovel Knight, known as the Plains of Passage, is a perfect introduction to the playstyle of the adventure you're about to embark on. It lays the groundwork for all of the gameplay mechanics and features that you need to become accustomed to in order to get the most out of Shovel Knight as possible. This game teaches you the rules of its world step by step in a very smart way reminiscent of Mega Man and Kirby. 
These rules of gameplay teaching have remained a tried and true format since Super Mario Bros. on the original Nintendo, and even games before that. If you want a player to know something, then you show it to them. You need your player to experience the obstacle, the rewards, and the consequences. You need to know. A Goomba in your way means you can't keep running forward. Touch him, and you lose a life. Jump on him, you gain points, and continue on your merry way. As with every successful platformer before it, Shovel Knight introduces you to your tools in terms of movement, jumping, and attacking. And the first expanse of land in the game provides a simple enough environment to get a handle on these mechanics. Even the placement of gravel piles introduces the fact that parts of the environment will be destructible. Imagine if Super Mario Bros. had no question mark blocks, but just bricks through every single level, the entire game. Some people would continue through the game never thinking to break the blocks. I mean, in common sense, why would you even bash your head into the ceiling? But the difference in visual presence of the glowing mystery boxes reveals that all of these blocks can or even should be bumped into, just in case there's something there. Over 20 years later, these rules still apply as we're introduced to glowing mystery piles in Shovel Knight. So if that's the case, we better keep an eye out for anything else that we may be able to break. Maybe even walls, whether they have obvious visual differences or not. Good to know that this world is full of secrets. This level isn't only well formatted for the Shovel Knight story, but the counterpart campaigns of Plague Knight and Spectre Knight, in which slight differences introduce those other characters' core mechanics, or just answering questions of, well, can this character do so and so? Let's get into these extra character stories as well. The additional campaigns of Plague of Shadows, Spectre of Torment, and the upcoming King of Cards offer entirely new takes on the Shovel Knight adventure, and are full enough to be packaged as their own games. Each character has their own story with slight stage adaptations, but more importantly, their movement and attack system completely flip the platforming mechanics of Shovel Knight on its head. First is the campaign of Plague Knight, in which you take on the role of the dastardly chemist as he strives to create the most powerful potion ever concocted. Forget about the shovel, because Plague Knight depends on a ranged attack and explosive methods of travel to traverse wider gaps than Shovel Knight ever could. In the more melancholic story of Spectre Knight, the familiar Reaper uses wall running and combos of attacks to jump from ledge to ledge as he recruits the Order of No Quarter that you faced in the story of Shovel Knight's original campaign. Even the many other knights that you never have the chance to play as feel like fleshed out characters. They all boast cartoonishly large personalities that fit their stage and their powers. Taking on all of these goofy bosses one after the other really adds to that final layer of charm that is the cast of Shovel Knight. When constructing a new game, there's an infinite number of options and features to focus on in order to make something functional, enjoyable, and even famously received. But when trying to appeal to not only a specific set of design aspects, but also specific audience expectations, options for development begin to shrink. Yacht Club Games had to nail these expectations in order to live up to the hopes of the more than 14,000 people that backed their Kickstarter. As a testament to how much the people believed in this game, the original Kickstarter goal of $75,000 was blown out of the water by an incredible $311,502. That is how enthusiastically gamers not only wanted this game to be developed, but believed it would live up to their hopes. The Kickstarter smashed through every stretch goal, expanding the original views of the project and even the reach through console availability. After being funded, Yacht Club Games dove further into their development process to fine-tune an incredible platformer, architecturally sound and bustling with unique aspects to make it stand out beyond the genre it was faithfully encompassing. Through a shenanigan-ridden two-player mode and multiple incredibly differed campaigns, Shovel Knight went from an elaborate crowdsourced promise to a smash indie hit, garnering several awards and a multitude of fans who are eager to indulge their modernized love of classic-style games. That is what's so great about Shovel Knight. Thank you all for joining us on this episode of What's So Great About Gaming as we dug a little deeper into the world of Shovel Knight. We're tired of all of the jaded negativity in the gaming world, and we want to focus on what makes every aspect of gaming so great. If you think the same way, consider subscribing to be a part of our community so you're always in on the discussions. If you have a favorite series or a single game that you think is great, leave a comment of your choice and we'll look into it. Thanks again for watching. Now go play a great game. We'll see you next time.